everybody. Today we are doing episode four of the Accidental Art Journal. We're going to be adding contrast to some pages and we're even going to complete two of those pages. Now just remember, the Accidental Art Journal is a composition book art journal where we use up the leftovers, the excess, the forgotten. We also test out new products. Here I have some cube stamps that I created and I'll put a link to that video in the description box or in the i cards in the top right hand corner. Now on these pages I am going to add contrast. I'm going to add black or white to the pages using my stamps. I want to see how these stamps work and so I'm just flipping through my accidental art journal looking at the pages that I have and deciding am I going to add black or I'm going to add white and what pattern do I want. Now the whole time that I'm adding, I'm stamping here, takes about 10 minutes. So it's not a long drawn out process or time in the studio. I'm not thinking a lot about what I'm doing. I'm just following my instincts and I'm not focused on where the page is going to end up. Now look at that contrast. Adding that white really turns this page into something that was, oh, okay, to, oh yeah, I can work with that. I'm not getting perfect stamping. That's okay. This is just mark making. This is adding interest to these pages. And I'm simply flipping through the, the pages and just making a snap decision on what I want to add. I could be right, I could be wrong. Sometimes I regret it afterwards, but then there's the challenge. I have to, I'm going to, in the end, I'm going to make that page work at some point in time. Now the Accidental Art Journal happens over several days, several weeks as I have discarded paint, as I am inspired to add another layer, as there's something that I want to try. So what you're seeing in today's video is about an hour's worth of footage trimmed down to about 25 minutes. But again, that was over several weeks. Here I'm breaking some pages using my stamps. Now these are pages that I've glued together but there is no gesso on this. And if I don't gesso the page, that's going to impact something else. Now I love this stamp and I love it on this torn paper background. Don't know where it's going, but I'm liking it so far. And here we're going to break another page with these stamps. So again, if you want to find out how we would make these stamps, click in the top right hand corner or go to the end card at the end of the video. There'll be a link to this video. So I'm quite happy with my stamps. I'm quite happy with the contrasting black and white that I've added. Now this was on a separate day. I had leftover modeling paste with this stencil and I flipped through my journal and I'm adding it to this page. Now here's one of those times that I kind of regret it because I love, love, love this page, but you know what? I'm going to have a challenge. This was another day using modeling paste and I'm just using part of the stencil and adding it to adding texture to this background. So this allows you to not waste any of your supplies. It's going to good use. Here I have extra thick gesso and I'm pushing it through this stencil onto this page. This is adding just a slight amount of texture to the page. So now I'm going to add some collage bits and focal images to the existing pages. Now some of these pages I 
when I started, I didn't glue together and they're very flimsy. This is one of them. And here I'm grabbing this colored coffee filter and just gluing it down in the corner of that page. Now here was another day and I grabbed my possibility bin. This is all focal images. I have one with sentiments. I have one with collage papers and I'm pulling out some of the focal images, little extra bits that I had, things that I didn't use that didn't work out. And I'm just going to go th flip through the art journal and place it on the pages and make some decisions. Now I liked it on the red one. This one I like because I put modeling paste and I have those trees and I hated it. I just did not like it at all. I could put that there. And who are we kidding? A butterfly can pretty much go on any background. So if you're really stuck, a black and white butterfly will go. I'm thinking I'm gonna put it on that one. So I'm just taping it down and making some more decisions. Here I've got a napkin, really didn't find anything. Oh. But I'm thinking maybe the butterfly is going to look good on this background and it truly would. This was a napkin that I did a page in my break the blank page. And I'm just grabbing whatever I have on my desk, whatever I'm thinking. Now I like this owl. It matches some of the purple and the blue that's in the background. This would go well here. It could go on this background. Again, it's got that yellow and the blue and the red. And I'm surprised it even goes with this one. But I have this butterfly that I stenciled on black and I'm really liking that. It's just darker colors of what I have in the background. So I'm gonna tape that down so I'm just making some snap decisions and when I find what I like, I'm just taping it down to do either today or tomorrow or another session. I'm liking this colorful background. It's vibrant and I think I'm going to use this owl on this page. So I might just in a session go through my focal images that I have, the excess ones, and just tape down some possible ideas. And then I have to think, what am I going to do? Here I don't like the modeling paste that I put, the tree and the wind. I'm thinking, well, if I put the butterfly there, that's going to knock it back. What about this dragonfly from my focal bin? Nope, I like the butterfly better. Oh, but I have some smaller ones, maybe multiple butterflies. And this is the process of flipping through the book and seeing what works. And again, I'm really not overthinking it. If something doesn't come, I keep, I move on. So I've decided to finish this owl page. So I, I got a couple sentiments, sentiments down and I'm going to use this one that says love who you are. And I did it in a bold, larger font because I like the dark black and white of these rectangles with the bright, almost jewel tones that are in the background. So I'm now I'm just playing with the composition of this page. So now that I know what focal image I'm using, I can adjust the background and you're going to see me doing that in a little bit. I've just outlined with my white Stabilo where that owl is going and I'm taking some white gesso and knocking back that color. I don't want those bright colors, especially in the dark parts, to come through the napkin when I glue it down. So I'm just whiting it out. Alternatively, I could have glued the napkin onto copy paper and then glued that down. Now I'm removing the two excess plies. It's easier to store when the extra plies are on it. 
and I'm going to glue that down with my fluid matte medium. And of course, I've given everything a complete dry in between. I just don't keep that footage in. And I'm gluing this down. And you can see how the colors are bright. They've kept bright because I've whited out what's underneath it. I'm going to use my brush again with the matte medium, so I'm just going to wrap it in saran wrap. Now I want to add and tweak those colors a little bit. Now that I know where the focal image is, I'm just adding a little bit of pink, a little bit of the Naples yellow to the background and maybe strengthening some of the color. I decided that maybe I wanted the word love larger, so I blew that up on my printer. And now I'm just deciding on that. And since I have strips of paper glued down there that are going to add texture and they're going straight across, I'm going to keep my sentiments straight. But I'm gonna play with it for a little while. So don't feel bad if you're spending time auditioning where things are going. Now I'm going to edge the paper and shade around the owl using my angle brush and my shading technique. This will frame the page. Now because this page is fairly flimsy, it's only composition paper that has, in this case, it has some collage papers on, on it. I'm going to put a plastic sheet this is just a cutting board from the dollar store underneath it, just to give a little bit more stability. And right away, adding that black shading around the edge of the page really adds. I'm also going to add some shading on those strips of paper that I collaged down. These were left over from ripped out, pages, ripped out books, and it's going to add some interesting texture and design to my background. Shading around my focal image. This just helps it stand out from the background. It gives weight to the focal image. I really love the background colors on this page. And that's one of the things that we can do in our accidental art journal. We're just focused on trying out color co combinations, trying out things without risking an expensive book. I decide to add some hearts because it says love who you're with. And I have these cut out that I cut with my silhouette and it's in my stash. And I'm seeing I'm, some of them are on gel prints and I'm thinking, oh, do I have any that I could use? Or maybe I'll just paint one. And I think, oh, that pink one works. And then I'm gonna add, I'm just changing the color ever so much to match what's in the background. Remember, if it's not exactly what you want, you can change it. And I'm just gluing down the sentiment playing with where I want that heart <laughs> and I put it up in his in his her hair and I like that and I think oh well what if I put three hearts and then I think oh well I could paint one blue one pink oh I could paint one yellow and so you see one idea I use the word love in my sentiment led to using the hearts that were also in my stash and that's the goal. It's using the stuff that's in your stash, the leftovers, the excess. And I want some pattern on here, so I'm using my shelf liner and I'm stamping the blue on the pink. 
the pink on the yellow. And this stamp kind of mirrors the box stamp that I have in the background that's black. I do come back with that stencil, punch card stencil, and add more, add in more of that black that kind of got lost with the addition of more paint. I want those hearts to stand out, so I thought, oh, I'm just going to do the dash all the way around it, but that really didn't bring it out very much, so then I thought, okay, I'm going to take my Posca pen and go around it and that works a little bit i'm going to trace around my sentiments as well to make them stand out giving the Posca pen, and then I'm thinking, you know, I want those hearts to stand out, so I'm shading them. And I think this just really was the right move. So this is a lovely textured mixed media page. People ask, like, when do you finish a page? I finish a page when I have an idea for how to finish the page. So whatever stage is in, if when I'm flipping through my accidental art journal, I have an idea, I will go with it at that time. So sometimes that's earlier on when maybe there's one or two layers and sometimes there's lots of layers. And whatever's in my possibility bins of focal images changes constantly. I added some shading around the texture strips that were on the background and I'm splattering with gold. It's the end of January in 2022. So I think maybe I was thinking of Valentine's Day, which is why I had the hearts out. So let's finish another page. I'm still unsure where that butterfly will go because, well, realistically, butterflies can go on any background. So I'm really liking the black and white butterfly on this colored page. This page right now is pretty much done. There's not a lot that I'm going to have to do to this background. This stencil is called Monarch Journal and I just grabbed it out. I want to darken these butterflies to my background. Now that I know what, I, what I'm going to do, I just want a couple of them to be darker and I'm gonna add a couple more. So I'm just lining up the stencil. And I'm working on a sentiment pack called Wings and Things. And I have the sentiment, the heart wants roots, the mind wants wings. And I figured that's good. And it's, it was in a bold font. I cut it apart into two rectangles to spread it across my page to get balance on the page and improve the composition. And I'm ready to glue things down. So this page I broke by doing the stenciling with black on the page. Then I colorized it 
with the teal and the purple. Then I did some stamping with the script stamp and then what you see today. And I love how it all went together. Now I'm just going to do some finishing by shading the page. So again, this page is not glued together, so it doesn't have the extra strength. I changed my mind from the beginning and I am, I've now glued all the pages together just to give the pages a little bit more strength. Adding a little bit of black on the stamped butterfly. This is a darkroom door butterfly stamp. It comes in three sizes, the stamp. I love it. And I'll link it and any of the stencils that have been used in the creation of the pages in the description box below in, in one of my various uh, affiliate links. The napkin and a lot of TCW stencils and mixed media stuff com comes from Ninny's napkins. From this page, you know, I like this color combination. That teal with the purple just is a winning color combination. And I'm going to splatter with white this time. Definitely have to use that stencil again. Here are close-ups of the finished two pages. Please check out the playlist, Accidental Art Journal, subscribe to my channel, and until next time, go get creative.